Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. It is time for another episode. Today we are going to bake from the new book. The most delicious lemon iced buns. This typifies nostalgia for me. As a kid growing up, we would eat lemon iced buns from the local bakery. So I thought I'd show you how to make them at home. Right, if we're baking, I thought we'll start with a good cup of coffee and I've got this really cool cafetiere and what it does is it actually traps all the coffee grinds in between the two. So you press this button, that bit comes off, which I thought was quite clever. Pop that in there and then I've got some lovely dark house roast coffee in these little individual portion pots. They're great. Let's pop that into there. You fancy a coffee, Carlos? Yes, please. Okay, a little bit of boiling water. Now, a little top tip for you, boil your kettle Leave it for a minute before you use it because it doesn't want boiling water. It wants like 95, okay? So in with a little bit, they call it blooming, but I'm just putting a little bit in there. And then in with your, so yeah, press that button and it sort of drops down a bit. And then I'm just gonna simply add the rest of the water. We'll make a cup of coffee and then we'll get on and bake. Now we're sort of, we're post book launch now. The book is out there. We went to Cockermouth Food Festival. We launched the book in September. It was a great success. Thank you to everyone who came, uh, bought books, came and said hello, had a chat. I hope you enjoyed the food. We certainly enjoyed cooking it for you and we had a blast of a weekend and can't wait for next year's food festival. So if you haven't been before, look for Taste Cumbria um, on Facebook and put it on your feed because the festival is fantastic. Right, let's leave that to brew for a few minutes and then we'll get on and bake. Right, lemon ice buns. For me, as I said to you before, so nostalgic. Just reminds me of being a kid, but I wanna make a more grown up refined version and that's what we did in the book. So it starts with 350 grams of bread flour. Now I live in the Lake District. We've never had this before. Eden Yard have grown wheat to make bread and they've managed to grow a really good bread flour. And I tried this at the food festival. Um, I made them a sourdough to have a nibble on and they seem to really like it. Um, so I thought I'd use the rest of it today. Right, so you want 350 grams of bread flour, okay? White bread flour. And then 150 grams of plain flour, all purpose. This isn't bread flour. This is gonna help make it a little bit softer, a little bit nicer to eat, okay? Um, what you don't want is like a crusty bread roll with icing on it. You want a soft, rich, buttery, lovely, little soft roll, okay? So we want, this will make it up to 500 grams, okay? There we go. That's the only bit of scales that I need. We're then gonna go in with 14 grams of yeast. That is normally twice what you would add for normal bread, but because we're gonna enrich it, which is gonna make it slightly denser, it needs to be, it needs to have a bit more lift. So in with your 14 grams of yeast, teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of sugar. Okay, and then just get your hands in and just blend it together, okay? And do that quite quickly because you don't want yeast and salt in contact with each other for long. Blend all that. Why did you add the sugar? Sugar's going to feed the yeast and it's going to give it that like oomph and make it react quicker. Now, normally with bread making, I wouldn't add sugar to it. But if you add a little bit of sugar, it will feed the yeast. It'll have, it'll have a party and it'll be like, whoa, let's go. And it'll do its thing and it'll rise. And because we're going to enrich it with a little bit of butter, which makes it, and we're going to use milk, which is slightly denser, um, it needs that extra bit of lift. So we've kind of given it everything it needs, basically. So, because um, I wanted to sort of lean towards brioche here, but I didn't want to add eggs um, and milk and everything else, I thought I'll just add custard powder because that is basically vanilla and eggs. And it means that I can just give it that lovely kind of brioche -y sort of character without it being too 
heavy on the eggs and the butter. So in that goes, take 50 grams of butter, and I've done room temperature because that means we can just work it in really easily, really quickly. And this butter will enrich it and it will make it soft. It'll make your rolls super soft. Even if you're not gonna make lemon ice buns, this recipe, without the icing, makes cracking burger buns for the barbecue or something like that. Because like, it's very briochey without being too brioche, if you know what I mean. Now, if you've got any questions at all, make sure you post them in the comments below. I will answer them as soon as I can. I am always here or, here or thereabouts so I can answer your kitchen dilemma questions. Or if you're not quite sure about something that I've done, just post it in the comments. Right, so that is the butter in. Let's make a little well in the middle. Before I do that, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Let's make, let's make our cup of coffee. Coffee, Carlos? Yeah. Right, so, we all right there? Perfect. I'm just gonna drop that down, as you would normally would with any French press or cafetiere, it just works like that. But what it does is it traps the coffee between the two red bits, which I think is really, really clever. Because often with cafetiers, you end up having to swill the coffee down the sink, and I'm not convinced that's necessarily the right thing to do, or you're getting a right mess. But Jury's roasted some lovely coffee, as he always does. There we go, Carlos. Have a little taste of that. I always like to taste Jury's coffee black, because I think you find it like really fruity and clean and light. Um, and then if you have a look at this, if you lift this out now, look, all you have to do is press that button and it'll pop out and you just dump the coffee grinds or put them in the garden. Apparently, if you put co used coffee grinds in the garden, it's full of nitrogen. Plants love nitrogen, it helps your garden grow. So put it in your compost there or put it in your garden. Okay. A little taste. Mmm. Nice. Nice. I'm not a black coffee drinker, but when I'm tasting like fresh ground coffee out of a cafeteria, I do like, I, I quite like it black. Right, in with my milk. And I've let my milk kind of warm up a bit at room temperature, but um, I haven't warmed it. I've just let it, you know, don't use the milk straight from the fridge because it's really cold. It'll tighten your dough and it'll just slow the whole process down. Okay, so I'm just using a wooden spoon. I'm just gonna bring that together. So we've got our butter in here. We've got our double yeast. Um, we've got our salt, sugar, and two types of flour. Our Cumbrian strong bread flour, which is fantastic. I'm so looking forward to getting my hands on some of that and making proper Cumbrian bread. I think it's lovely. Um, and then we've got a little bit of all-purpose flour just to keep it nice and soft and pillowy. Got our butter in there and we've got our custard powder. Okay, so let's just drop that onto there. There we go. Tiny bit of flour on my hands just to allow me to get that off. And then we're just going to knead this for five minutes till it's nice and soft and it's clean. So at the moment you've got like lots of flour and bits and bobs. Once you've kneaded that for five minutes, it should be clean, manageable, and have a lovely stretchy dough. So you can see the change by giving it five minutes of kneading, we've developed the gluten and the dough has become a lot stretchier. What I like to do is just slap the dough down and fold it over. And that's gonna really help develop the strength of the bread so that when the yeast starts to feed off the sugars and create carbon dioxide and double in size, the dough can hold all that air inside it. Now, pop it into your bowl. We're gonna cover it and we're gonna leave it to prove until it doubles in size. Here's one I did earlier. This one has doubled in size and you can kind of see what's going on. Let me just have a bit of coffee. Mm. Coffee and baking. What more does a man want? Right, there's my dough. 
Now, can we have a little look quite close up at this, Carlos? Yes. Yeah? Yes, so I'm going to tear this open and you're going to be able to see the gluten structure. It's like, a, it's a bit like a spider web almost, you see? There's like a framework and you can kind of see that we've got a nice stretchy dough. Look, that's how stretchy it's become by kneading it and working it, okay? When we first started kneading it, it just tore straight away. But because we've kneaded it and we've left it to prove and double in size, we've now got a really nice, strong dough that's gonna hold its shape, okay? So what we're gonna do is portion it up. We're gonna make rolls. So, dough scraper, cutter, cut it in half, cut it in half, cut it in half, and we're gonna make uh, we're going to make 12 in total. So each one of these needs cutting into three. Now, if you're not sure and you're not very good at portioning up, just use a set of scales. You know, do it by eye and then adjust it. So like that, I know that one's not quite right. So there we go. So I can see I've got those there. That one's not quite right. So we'll nick a bit from that, nick a bit from that one, nick a bit from that one but you want them to be the same size because you want them all to prove evenly and bake evenly so everyone gets the same portion. You don't want anyone to fall out, do you? Whether they've got a big one and you haven't sort of thing. So, without adding any flour, okay, all we want to do is take our dough ball and just roll it in our hands. And what I do, clean hands, okay, no flour, no extra flour because we don't want to dry these out. Put a bit of pressure and just do that. Is that overhead the best way for this, Carlos? Uh, yeah. Yeah? So I've got my hands open, and I'm just using my palms like that. And then eventually, I'm going to bring this top hand in, and I'm going to put it around the bread roll like that. Okay? Until I've got the perfect little bread roll. All right? And pop that down there. Three by four on this tray. So I'm using Masterclass. Uh, these are smart ceramic non-stick baking trays. When you go straight onto a good baking tray, you get a nice conduct of heat, which means you get a lovely bake as well. So let's roll all of these into rolls. Nice bit of pressure in between each hand and then roll it up. And you just end up with this really nice, clean bread roll. Once you've got all 12 rolls, spaced out nicely on a non-stick baking tray. We're gonna leave this to prove. Now I'm gonna put it in my AEG oven at 35 degrees C fan, and that will prove them up a nice controlled temperature. It's really warm in here at the moment. We've got lots of studio lights. It's quite a warm day. So they, I don't want them to prove too quickly. Um, they'll probably, once they've doubled in size, brush them with a little beaten egg, and then bake them at 180 degrees till they're lovely and light and golden. Um, and just softly baked, okay? So 180 degrees. Right, my brioche buns are baked and cooled. Now, look at these. Because we've baked them straight onto these, these uh, smart ceramic trays, look, lovely and golden. Listen, that's what you want to hear. They sound hollow, they're cooled, they're ready for our lemon icing. So. All I've got is icing sugar here, or powdered sugar, some people call it. Um, lemon juice, squeeze it through your hand. Now I've got two lemons here. Do one at a time, because we've had this conversation many a times, haven't we, Emily? That, yeah. like, there's never a precise amount to add of liquid to icing sugar, and you'll either end up with cement or it'll be liquid. So there's the first lemon in. Give it a stir because it needs to be thick enough to sit on top of the bun, all right? But you don't want it too thin that it just slides off. So that is clearly gonna be too thick. So I'm gonna add another one because you never quite know how much lemon juice you're gonna get out of a fresh lemon. And please never use bottled lemon juice in this, all right? You want that fresh, vibrant, lemony flavor to cut through the sugar just catching all the pips, and then we're just gonna mix that together, all right? That's it, see, we're nearly there on one and a half lemons today. But if I show you sort of how thick, it almost wants to be like that fondant icing texture. 
So it wants to be sort of liquidy enough that it'll drop off the spoon, but not run, okay? Just gonna add a tiny touch more. But like literally a few drips, because if you go too far, it'll just slide off, okay? I bet you don't have these in Spain, do you? No. no? But you have lemons. I know, plenty. And you probably have brioche, don't you? Because you have that yeah. for breakfast, don't you? So, take a tablespoon, sit it right on top, and then you use the back of the spoon and just to spread it, and it wants like that cap of lemon icing on the top. Now, I'm gonna have to remember to leave one and ice it plain for Thomas because he doesn't like lemon icing for some reason. Bizarre. Cannot understand him. But the rest of the house love a good lemon ice bun. Your dad likes them, doesn't he, Emily? I feel like we send them a lot. Yeah. Or we did do in the shoot for the book. He appreciates it. <laughs> Your mum does not. They're not gluten no, not gluten or dairy free. Right. So just, yeah, use the back of your spoon, but the icing must be strong enough to just sit on top, okay? Right, there we go. So you can see it's just right. And I'll be honest with you, there've been a few bloopers over the years where I've never quite got the ice in. It's either been too thick or too thin. You've just got to get it right so that it sits on top like that. Look at that. And then you get to do this. Mm. Lemon ice buns. Oh, love them. You've got to make these. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you bake these. They're absolutely delicious. And I'll see you on the next episode.